Welcome back. I'm very excited to introduce you to our next guest. Joe Ingram is a dear friend, a longtime friend, and an amazing business person who has a real heart and specialty for all things auto. And since that's never my specialty, I'm really excited to have Joe here to help us today. Thank you so much for being with my us. My pleasure, absolutely. Good so, seeing you. So it's good to see you too. And you've been doing some really cool stuff. You have been the GM of a big auto dealership. You've done sales, finance, all things auto in your history. Absolutely. And now you're off to Ingram Interactive. Correct. So you're on to your next. Tell me, tell us about Ingram Interactive. So for 18 years in the automotive business, it's been about sales, it's been about phones, it's been about internet. And so over the years, I've had the processes and the the actual steps that it takes to be done and every dealership became more successful. So now Ingram Interactive just branched off as my own and to say how do I go into dealerships and how do I help them to go one step further and then also how do I help consumers understand the car buying process a little bit better. And so, so that's where I come in because yeah. that, that, <laughs> was, our, that yes. was our brunch conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> it was, yes how to sell or buy a car. So I lived in New York City in Manhattan for 27 years. I had 40,000 yellow cars mm -hmm. at my service, so Absolutely. I never had to think twice, or rental agencies, I never had to think twice about it. I purchased cars twice before that in my much earlier days. And then when I moved to California and needed a car, right. and of course called a friend, a man, and said, you need to help me do this because I'm not gonna do this. And so I know Personally, it's a hard and often scary thing to do, but you're actually saying it's sometimes not safe and that there are certain precautions we can all take, male or female. Absolutely. So let's talk about the buying and selling process of your personal car. So on a personal car, there's typically two things you gotta watch out for as far as I say you need to be safe with. One is financially, mm -hmm. you don't wanna be taken advantage of. Sure. And second is actually your physical safety when it comes to meeting a stranger, somebody who's gonna come and actually look at your car and things like, don't don't bring somebody to your house. It's one of the, know, one of the most really foolish things that. That, that you stop and at the end, after it goes bad, yeah, is when you, you say, say, why did I do that? And so the answer is, please stop, don't, don't, don't do that. So everybody's selling and buying cars like Craigslist or they're putting them up on Nextdoor or where there, do you there, go? There's a, there's a whole bunch. There's AutoTrader, there's Cars.com, there's Car Gurus. Craigslist is very, very popular for independent sellers uh -huh. um, to look for cars. So where do you meet and meet this person? How, the, it's kind of like a date. Yeah, it, it absolutely <laughs> is. It, it, the, the date is, don't pick me up at home. I'm going to meet you someplace neutral and safe. Uh -huh. So I usually rep rec recommend that people go to either a mall or they go to a like a strip center, the, the strip mall that has um, like a supermarket, something like that Big where there's a lot. bunch of people, there's a lot of light. Do it during the day mm -hmm. as best as you can because sometimes you have to do it after work, but when you do, you want to pick something very well lit and very populated so mm -hmm. that nothing bad comes your direction. That, there isn't somebody around to witness or see. That was that was so smart, because of course you're saying, oh, wait a minute, I'll be at work, the car's in my driveway, just go take a look at it, call me back later. I'm like, oh, now they know you're not home, and that your car is right absolutely. there. Absolutely, <laughs> and that, that was one of the trigger points that, went, that happened, that somebody goes, well, you know what, I'm not gonna be there, but I'll meet you tonight at seven, because I don't get home from work till then. Well, you just told somebody my house is sitting empty right. until 7 p.m., and then you come home and wonder why all your stuff's missing. Right, it's so, kind of like the people on vacation who say, oh, Rome is fabulous, and then come home to an empty, <laughs> empty house. house. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> so with about, an opportunity to buy new furniture, though. There, well, yes. there's the opportunity. <laughs> yes. What about pricing? Pricing is always this amorphous thing. How do you decide the car is worth X to you, but what's it worth to another person? Okay, well, there's two different ways to go. One is to sell it to a dealership, mm -hmm. which you would do the transaction at a dealership, which would be safe yeah. and there, but you have to have some baseline of understanding what your car is worth. And out in the, the Western United States, the biggest one that, that gives you the value is KBB, Kelly Blue Book. Okay. So if you go to kbb.com, put in your car information, the trickiest thing you'll ever find is your definition of fair, good, or excellent, and it's like 3% of all the cars that are on the road today are listed as excellent, okay. but we all believe our car is excellent. Mine is, right? mine it's, is it's, best. It's immaculate, <laughs> yes. And part of the reason is we become desensitized to the dents, the dings, the things that are on the car, mm -hmm. and it's never in the buying party's interest 
to agree with you with what condition your car's in. True. Right? If your car, if I have to admit, yes, it's excellent, then I know I have to pay you more. Got it. And on kellybluebook.com, once you put in all your information with mileage, color, and condition, typically most cars, over half, fall into the good category. So if you click on good, it'll tell you what it would be worth to a dealership. It'll also tell you what it'll be worth to a private party, and it gives you a range. So you know, based on where your car falls within that range to say, is it there or not? I've always found if you undercut the range, because you can, yeah. then you're gonna get people that are interested, people that'll come in and actually buy the car, where if you're at the top end of the, the range itself, you just limited yourself to how many buyers. So it'll come down to time. How much time do you wanna spend waiting for a perfect offer on a perfect buy. And that was another point that you made, which I thought was great, is the time to sell, like anything, is when you don't have to. Absolutely. Not when you're in a Absolutely. hurry. Absolutely. If you're rushing to get rid of it, then yeah, it's go you're not going to get the money that you need for it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, I always say, you can always get a baseline, right? A, a dealership would never pay you what a private party would pay you, mm -hmm. because a dealership has a lot more restrictions when it comes to reselling that car. But what, like what? So um, smog safety, uh, a dealership can't sell a car with tires that are bald or brakes that are needed or something that isn't working. They have to pass smog and safety because it's their dealer license that's on the line. A private party, I could sell you a car and say it needs the rear two tires. And I just tell you I've deducted for that. Mm -hmm. And those are the, the situations. So there's a completely different way of looking at it. So they always have to undercut what the so the dealer is. actually does wind up investing in the car. I know they, they oh, say they do, and I always just wondered. Man, I oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. There, I, I will say that the least expensive uh, or expense on reconditioning a car is about $600, and mm -hmm. that's just going through smog and safety with a set of tires. Got it. So uh, everything else will be added to that. So you'll see that there's probably about a $2,000 difference between a private party in the same condition and what a dealership is offering because they're typically going to have to put about $1,000 into that car to get it out to the front line to get, to get ready. And yeah. at a dealership, somebody walks up and says, this scratch, fix it. There's this that's fix it. Where if I'm buying, if it's just you and I, yeah. we sit down, you look and you go, no, you know, little Timmy's bicycle clicked right there and I just never fixed it. And I go, okay, and I understand. And I don't expect you to go fix it before I buy it. Got it. So. And you've adjusted for the price. And I guess like anything else, it's what you're willing to pay. But I always found that the, the stress-free aspect of the trade-in mm -hmm. was probably optimal for me. I Absolutely. get that it's not going to be the best for everybody. Correct. But I've had good success um, getting re, I, I guess, not refurbished so much, but the, because the dealerships now recertify yes, they, their cars. Yes, they, because it has to be reconditioned to get it to mm -hmm. somewhat better. But, you know, a lot of times what I say is that um, Kelly Blue Book, the reason I, I, I'm not affiliated with them, but Got because it. we use them, they have a program called Instant Cash Offer. And what they do is, so when, after you've actually gone through and typed all your information on the screen, you can see what is your trade-in value, what is this, but there's a, a Blue Book offer when you click on it. So that's going to be independent of what the dealerships that are out there, and only certain dealerships are on the program. And they will click and say, this is what Kelly Blue Book is willing to buy the car for. Oh, and is that even an option? And then, so what it is, is you will go to a buying center, and then you will go in, they will inspect your vehicle, just as they do at a CarMax, mm -hmm. which is another alternative as well, mm -hmm. and they will just, then the dealership will write you a check for your car. And it's through the Kelly Blue Book program so that they know exactly what they're doing. Wow. I, I know that buying and selling is stressful for a lot of people when it comes to cars, same as houses. I mean, these Absolutely. are these are our real big assets that you hope to not have many in your life, but exactly. sometimes exactly. out here more so, because I come from the East Coast originally, where I guess weather and just different road conditions, um, it's not as much of a car culture as the West Coast Absolutely. and certainly California. So I see people buying and selling cars on a very regular, I mean, every few months, every, they just, because they can. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and West Coast, it's, your vehicle has always been part of your identity. It's who you are actually saying, this is who I am on the, on the East Coast. I have a lot of clients on the East Coast, so mm -hmm. I go there and you have people coming in and go, I don't care. I just want something to get me from A to B occasionally when I need it. Exactly. And I'm like, totally different cultures that, exactly. that come in. 
but yeah. Yeah, well, it's so helpful, Joe. And I know we're going to post all the information along with the interview so that our viewers can, um, can review and also get the information. Where can people find you if they want more information? Um, you can go to my website, which okay. is ingraminteractive.com. Okay, we'll and post that on the screen. Absolutely, and then uh, there's a little click at the bottom to contact us, and I have no issue with helping anybody that says, I need can you go walk me through this again? Okay. Can you go through that? Myself or one of the staff will actually help them and say, Perfect. let's let's make it as easy as possible. And we also do help people when they go buy a new car. Mm -hmm. That's another alternative as well. So Great. I can't always be there, but I typically know a lot of people within the business. So I can set you up with a dealership that I know somebody and I'll call ahead of time and say, okay, I have a friend coming in, this is what they are, and we make sure that no one gets taken advantage of and nobody has to stress. That's and wonderful, because so. I'm all about a stress-free life. Absolutely, aren't we all? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. That's what we're all trying much. to achieve, yes. And so. really appreciate you coming in. I think, thanks Thank for the you. invite, appreciate you. And we'll be right back. Let me